Darren Randolph, welcome to AFC Bournemouth. Have you got the X Factor? <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like to think so. You must be delighted to be here. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's over the line now, finally. So uh, yeah, very happy and, and, and ready to get ready to get started. I know you know at least three of our players very well: Mark Travers, Ryan Fredericks, Marcus Tavernier. Have they told you good things about the club? Yeah, they have. Um, and then obviously other people who, who don't play or have been here in the past have, uh, have, have told me how, how uh, great of a club it is and, and, and the area as well. So uh, that definitely helped in, in my decision. Like I said, knowing, knowing the three boys is, is, uh, is good and that's helped. So yeah, I'm happy, happy to be here, ready to get started. Now Neto is one of the other goalkeepers you're going to be duelling with. Darren, and I know that fighting for a place is something you've been very used to throughout your career. Yeah, I think m most most clubs I've been at, I've had, I've had to do, had to had to fight, um, you know, other goalkeepers, and I think that's just the the nature of the business. Uh, obviously, uh, it's our own little group within within the group. Uh, you know, always been been quite close um, in every kind of uh, goalkeepers union um, that I've been in, um, and ultimately we're just here to obviously to push each other and. Uh, you know, whoever has the shirt, then it's you know hopefully going to work uh, in their favour and, and and make everybody you know perform to the best of their ability. More than 500 appearances for club and country, Darren. You must be looking forward to lending your experience to this group as well. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know the position that the clubs in. I've been there uh, in the uh, in the past, so I'd like to think I've got uh, you know some experience and some uh, you know some other you know services to to give to, uh, to the rest of the team. You certainly learnt the ropes during your time at Charlton with some loan spells at places like Welling, Accrington, Gillingham, Bury and Hereford. They all would have stood you in good stead for a career. Yeah, start off uh, in, in, the, in the, the lower leagues, uh, what to call it, you know, proper men's football. But, um, you know, set me, set me up well for, for my footballing journey. Um, and I think that's, that's, you know, held me in good stead. Uh, over my career. And then he went to Motherwell where you became a legend, Darren. You played in the Champions League, you kept a clean sheet record for them and you got pelted with cigarette lighters in Denmark. Tell us about that. Yeah, I think we played in Copenhagen and uh, cigarette lighters, cause Coke bottles, little plastic cups of beer. I think there was beer anyway. Um, what else? Coins, the usual, usual stuff. Uh, but a nice, nice little collection for after the game. That must have been a really good spell in your career because you were also in the team of the year in Scotland in 2011-12. Yeah, it was, a, it was kind of a period in my career where I just wanted to go out and make a make a name uh, for myself. Um, so, like I said, got to you know go to Motherwell, got a chance to play, experience uh, European football for the first time. Um, so yeah, it, was, it was a good good period uh, for myself and, and for the club. Bournemouth fans would not let me forget to ask you about the record 8-0 win that Bournemouth had at St Andrews in 2014-15 when you played for Birmingham. Thank you. <laughs> I've also got to remind them of the fact that Birmingham came here at Easter and gave Bournemouth a real scare by taking a 2-0 lead and eventually losing 4-2. What was it like to play against that Bournemouth team in that season, Darren? Um, that season... I th Bournemouth were probably the only team in the league that probably everybody feared to play. Free-flowing football, you know, goals, power, pace, um, just everything. And that time at Birmingham, we were we were struggling. We didn't have a manager. Um, the club was kind of upside down, um, trying to kind of I don't know, waiting to see what would happen on, on a day-to-day -day basis. But um, it's always going to be tough playing Bournemouth. They're probably top of the league at that time, and then. We got a man sent off after six, seven minutes, um, and yeah, that's all I, I choose to remember or tell you about that day. Uh, another successful period in your career was at Middlesbrough. You were in the PFA Team of the Season. You were Player of the Year at Middlesbrough, and like I said earlier, you played with Marcus Tavernier there. Just tell us about playing with him there. Yeah, uh, Tav broke into the into the Middlesbrough side when I was there, um, and he was just what we needed at, at that time. Um, you know, that he had the, the 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 energy that you know young players have when they when they break into the team. You know, he can run for days. He's great on the ball. Um, 
and he, pl he played uh, very well for us when when uh, when he was called upon. Um, and again, over, over the years, you play with obviously some of the younger players, and it's good to see, you know, how his how his career has kind of kicked on uh, since then. Some fond memories for you at West Ham, Darren, as well. You played in the final game at Upton Park, and you kept a clean sheet in a three 0 win against Liverpool, which was West Ham's first victory against Liverpool since 1963. Yeah, that came. Was it? A week after, uh, we played Bournemouth at the bowling ground and we lost. We lost four or three. Um, so Bournemouth's been my been my bogey team over the years. But uh, like I said, yeah, the next game was was Liverpool away. Um, I think we won three nil. Um, and then that was so it was obviously obviously nice. The, the next game to kind of to have that. Um, and like I said, yeah, the last game at the bowling against uh, Man United, we won that game three two. So it was a nice, uh, nice memory, nice result to kind of leave that stadium uh, before going on to the to the new one. How much of AFC Bournemouth's journey would you have followed? I know you encountered them in the Championship with, with Birmingham. Do you remember the days back when they were struggling at the bottom of League Two and then they got into the Premier League? Yeah, because I've, I've I've been to Bournemouth before to play. Obviously, before um, the stadium was was rebuilt, I think then. I don't know where we are in the stadium, but then when the end there was no stand. It was just like a little wooden kind of wall. And if the ball went over, you didn't get it back. You had to wait for a new one to be thrown on. Uh, and it's one of the stories kind of in football you, you can't help but, but notice and, and to follow. Um, and it's, it's really a, a dream story to see, obviously, where the club was uh, to, to where it is now. The club's journey's certainly taken another significant turn with new owners arriving very recently. I know that you're an officiado of basketball and NFL. Just tell us about how Americans do their sport and how well they do it. Uh, uh, yeah, they they do it very well. There's no, you know, there's no stone left on left unturned. It uh, it really is it's kind of made out to be you know a, a big thing and a, a good family family day out. Uh, you know they love the kind of entertainment as well. Um, obviously, come from a, a basketball family that was in in the house from, you know, uh, when I was a little baby, um, and obviously NFL as well. Um, unfortunately, I don't know too much about ice hockey, but uh, I'll start to do my research and I'll, I'll pick it up pretty quick. We're all Vegas. We're all Vegas <laughs> Golden Knights fans now. I can assure you. Just expand a little bit on that, that basketball side of it. I think if you hadn't been a footballer, you certainly would have tried to become a basketball player following in your dad, dad's footsteps, and only your brother as well. Yeah, my dad and, and little brother still play. Um, brother plays for uh, obviously his, his club side and for Ireland as well. Um, I played for Ireland when I was younger in basketball. I uh, got to about 15 and obviously needed to make a, make a choice between um, football or basketball. Uh, I was never going to make it to the, to the NBA, so... It was uh, <clears throat> it was football I chose to chose to go with, um, and so far it's been it's been a good decision. I read somewhere that you also fancied yourself as maybe being a Formula One driver. Just tell us about that. I don't know where you got that from. <laughs> that was on the West Ham official website. It said if you weren't a footballer, you would have been a basketball player or a Formula One driver. Never mind. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Someone's definitely made that up. <laughs> Now you played a little bit of Gaelic football and rugby when you were, when you were younger, and you started out as a centre half. What tipped the balance to become a goalkeeper? Um, we had a, a cup final, and the goalkeeper ended up getting injured. So the manager said, "You know, he said, who, who wants to go on goal?" And my hand shot up, just thinking that I would just be there for one game. Um, and now I was stuck there after it. I never got to get back out on on, on the pitch and run around. So uh, yeah, put myself forward. Um, I just think probably through playing basketball and Gaelic and rugby, it's uh, you know the hand-eye coordination that definitely that definitely helped. Now, anybody who didn't get the uh, X Factor gag at the start of the interview, your um, partner is Alexandra Burke, who won the X Factor in two thousand and eight, and then you became a father last year for the first time. Just tell us how fatherhood has, has changed your life. Yeah, uh, massively. Um, you know, with the other responsibility now of looking after a, a little baby, um, kind of changes your your whole kind of your whole outlook on 
on on life and uh again it's kind of given me kind of more more drive than uh probably what i had what i had before um you know to obviously look after the the family and to uh you know make make the baby proud so we're going to finish up with one about your mum your mum's a folk singer now we still have this procedure here where new signings have to do an initiation song. Yeah, but you don't need to say it to remind people because they may forget. <laughs> but by you saying it now, it's going to be a thing. So what is Especially your... the fact you've put in that mum sings. What is Everyone's your... going to be expecting, sorry to keep cutting you off, everyone's going to be expecting big things and they're just, <laughs> it's going to be a letdown. <laughs> Have you got any songs no, in mind? No, I don't. Not, if I did, I'm not telling you. Brilliant. Excellent. <laughs> no worries. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah.